Hello, my name is Kelly Haxt, Technical Support Manager for SoftTouch Solutions Incorporated. Today, we're going to be working with an advanced markup formula. In this example, we're looking at a sliding scale smart formula. The sliding scale works on the basis that the lower the cost of the molding, the higher the markup, and the higher the cost, the lower the markup. When I say that this is a smart formula, I'm referring to the section at the bottom. This formula works the same way as the smart formula we looked at in the basic markup formula video. We're setting a markup for the cost price, the chop price, and the join price. Which one is used is based on which order type the user has selected, and whether or not the item has a wholesale price for that type. If the user selects the length price, FrameReady checks to see if the cost field is greater than zero. If it is, the length markup will be used. If cost is zero, it checks to see if the chop field is greater than zero and uses the chop price. But if chop is also zero, it will check that the join price is greater than zero and use the join price. The same check is made if the user selects the chop price or the join price. That way, no matter what cost type the user selects, even if that item does not have a price for the related cost type, FrameReady will still be able to mark up the item. The only exception would be is if all the wholesale cost fields are blank. But if that's the case, FrameReady would alert you whenever you open the program. Once you've typed this in initially, you'll probably never need to modify the bottom section. The top section is where the markups are set for all the different cost types. Remember that cost refers to the length price. The first line reads that if cost is less than $2.50, use a five-time markup. So any item priced by length that ranges from $0.01 cent to $2.49 will use a five-time markup. If the cost per foot is greater than $2.49, FrameReady will look at the next line. The next line reads, if cost is less than $3.75, use a 4.9 markup. Any items from $2.50 to $3.74 will use a 4.9 markup. Previous versions of FrameReady use this same structure in a table form. FrameReady simply goes line by line until it finds the range that the item fits into, and it gives it a markup. Each line in this part of the formula represents a price break. You can add more lines to increase your range, or remove lines to keep the formula simpler. Just make sure you keep all the lines in numerical order. The last line of the cost section simply reads cost times 3.8. This will give any length items that don't fit into any of the previous lines a 3.8 markup. In this formula, that would be any item with a cost of $20 or more. The chop section is very similar, however it has less price breaks, and the join section has no price breaks, simply join times two. As you can see, as we change the order type, the markup and retail price per foot changes. If we select an order type that does not have a corresponding wholesale price, then the item still receives a markup. The set price is simply a dollar amount added to the total price of the frame. The set price is commonly used for shipping, fuel surcharges, and join surcharges. As you can see in this example, FrameReady is first checking to see if the item is a fillet. If that is true, it will use a $7.50 set price. If the item is not a fillet, it will use a $5 set price. If you wish to use the same set price, regardless of the group, you can simplify this by simply typing in the desired set price. When you're satisfied with your price formula, you'll want to add it as a new default formula and apply the formula to all applicable molding items. For an overview of this process, please take a look at the molding pricing video for working with defaults. This concludes this clip. Thanks for watching.